How are you doing today? I'm great. I'm great. I'm in the middle of a, of a really incredible and stressful um, process of building some pre-pandemic, post-pandemic, current pandemic, during pandemic theater in Williamstown, Massachusetts. Oh. Um, we're doing a piece, like a devised piece of outdoor theater. So I'm working, you know, like midnight, no, noon to midnight or two o'clock in the morning and we're dodging rain and trying to, you know, like bend the will of mother nature in our favor. But, um, but yeah, other than that, I'm doing really great. And what has that been like for you building that in the midst of the pandemic and also the weather that everyone's been happening around the country? So it's been, it's been incredible. I, during the pandemic, I started, or I became a member of a little theater company with a number of actor friends of mine who were saying like, how do we make work? And also how do we take this as an opportunity to do the kind of work that we couldn't do during a pandemic, you know, when all of us would be busy with jobs and obligations. Um, and we decided to do devised outdoor theater um, and part of that process is allowing every company member to have like what we hope is an equal say, like a very de democratic approach to theater making. You know, we've gotten rid of, or we hope to have gotten rid of some of the hierarchy. And so the best part about doing this is that this is a piece of theater that was written by and has the input of and the collaboration of every single artist who appears in it or who works on it. Um, so that's been amazing. And the rain has been disappointing. <laughs> Absolutely. And with your experience in theater, you are an accomplished actor. Uh, what was your transition like transitioning into doing theater into now being a director? So I think that my my journey is um, is a really interesting one with lots of different legs and branches that go off and then always come right sort of back to the heart, which is, you know, I became a, a theater professional and an, and an actor because I wanted to be a storyteller. And as I moved more into doing film and television work as an actor, I became really excited about this medium. And a few years ago, um, I this Mike, Michael Arden, who's you know the artistic director of my theater company, was doing a production of Once on This Island off uh, on Broadway, a revival. And I asked him, I said, you know what? I think I want to sort of dabble into directing. Can I come be your assistant? He said, sure. So I worked with him and I worked alongside of him and simultaneously my relationship with um, Brooke Kennedy and Robert and Michelle King, I had worked on The Good Fight and a show Brain Dead for them. As I was sort of coming up and, and sort of getting my feet wet in the world of theater directing, they really reached out to me and said, hey, what about TV? Are you curious? Are you interested? And Brooke Kennedy really took me under her wing and I meant she mentored me and I shadowed her and I did a lot of work and I love studying. And I think at the heart of it, like if your goal and your interest is in sharing stories, any of the any and all ways that you can do that become interesting and exciting. And um, I'm loving TV directing and I'm loving um, how collaborative it is. As an actor, you actually spend a lot of time by yourself studying your lines and you come to set, you work with the other actors and you go away. Um, but directing is just meetings with all the other incredible artists and technicians and getting to really understand big picture, how, how we take, a, you know, you know, 60 pages on a piece of paper, you know, paper, well now everything's digital phones and stuff, um, and turning that into a visual and auditory and sensory experience for audience members is really incredible. Now, with creating this experience for the audience members, this episode really unpacks a lot from the pandemic to medical racism and even marital woes. What was your what was your kind of creative process for creating this episode? Well, I um, well, I was inspired by the cast first and foremost. Let's talk about the fact that I got to work with Ben Vereen and Jane Lynch and Christine Bransky and Audrey McDonald, some of my heroes and my colleagues, and. Um, and uh, Nambi Nambi, who really, this episode is really focuses a lot on Jay's journey um, through the pandemic and what it was like potentially for people who were forgotten in some areas of the hospitals in the early, early days of the pandemic. And I live in New York City and we were hit really hard, really fast, really early. Um, and so I really wanted that story to feel present and real while also registering the fact that at some point one has to get back to work and piecing together what it means to have memories or half memories while also trying to um, be you know come back into the world and be a productive member of his you know of his community and his job and so I was really inspired by them 
Um, I read a lot of firsthand accounts of, you know, nurses and doctors who were inside um, some of the hospitals in the worst moments of the pandemic. And then I also wanted it to feel, have little bits of humor in there. I mean, we have Ben Vereen working on the show and he has such incredible depth, both in his comedy and in his um, dramatic work um, and Jane as well. So I was, I really wanted to let the show be the show and, and do a great episode of The Good Fight. Good Fight and then also, um, you know, put a little bit of my stamp on it, a little bit of, a little bit of, you know, Nikki in there. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, you did an amazing job. Was there an emotional challenge with really exploring these topics while we're still in the middle of the pandemic? Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's not lost on, on any of us. I don't think that we are making this COVID story, which feels, you know, in the world of the good fight, they're in a where they're in a world where they're actually further along in the pandemic than we are presently. So we're shooting these scenes where every single human on set who isn't current, isn't acting in front of a camera that is rolling is wearing a mask that we were being tested three times a week. We had Abe, our COVID compliance officer screaming out six feet and social D, you know, every time we're trying to work. Um, departments were separated in a way, in a, on a regular set, we would be in and out of each other's space. We'd all be standing and huddled behind a monitor. And meanwhile, I couldn't even speak to my actors unless I had eye covering and my mouth covered. So it was incredible to be, to be exploring like a hopeful future, the place we want to be, but then also taking very seriously our very recent past. And in a lot of places, and as you know, not to get too into it as, as if you're following the news and the Delta variants, where a lot of places in the world, they are exactly now where the, what we were describing in our episode as the past. So it feels, um, it feels like the story sort of is coming in and out of reality and sort of fiction, hopeful future, hopeful fiction, yeah. And with the show really exploring all of these things, but also, like you said, having that level of comedic timing and having that comedic relief, um, do you hope that this episode can kind of bring hope to people who are kind of anxious or depressed about the current state of our world right now? Gosh, yeah, I hope so. I hope that there's there's a little bit of levity. And I also hope that it's, you know, it's an episode that people feel like we got into a little bit of of you know, Jay, Jay's world, Jay's mind, Jay's personality. I, I love Jay episodes. I'm a humongous Good Fight fan, obviously. Um, and I love the Jay episodes. I think it's amazing when they allow a character who's sort of as mysterious and, and resourceful as Jay to have this really beautiful um, emotional life. Um, and watching Yambi and Ben Vereen work together over the time that I was working on that show was just amazing to see. I, I mean, I could get emotional seeing like, you know, um, a new master and an older master side by side, you know, finding their way through some really difficult, um, some really difficult material, um, laying on their backs, you know, like in, in gurneys and, you know, like this really dark and sort of depressing hospital scene. So a uh, hospital set, I, I just, I, I'm really, I really hope that people find it to be both hu about the human spirit and the and also a little bit of a little bit of levity. Take a little bit of air out of that tension balloon. <laughs> and with this being a very talented cast, and you have a cast of icons on the show, were you able to learn anything about your own acting while directing them? I mean, did I ever? <laughs> I, I actually, you know, it's funny. I thought, I thought, I don't know that I could go back to acting. No, obviously. Uh, I did, and I, I had been working on, a, on another show as a performer at the same time as I was directing, and um, a few things I learned. One, um, uh, that actors are not always um, the best judges of what their performances are, but also um, if Audra McDonald asks you for one more take, you should always give it to her um, because she says, oh, let me have one more. And you think, well, I think we got it. And she says, no, 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 I have an idea. And then you let her go a second time and that's, or a third time or whatever it is. And it's always the one that you end up in the edit with. Um, and, um, you know, and I learned, you know, I, I learned a little bit of, to give myself a little bit of grace as an actor to realize that every single person is there to support um, the best performance out of that actor. And so there's a, you can take some of that pressure off. Um, and um, 
Yeah, but I, I love actors. I love working with actors. I was always getting in trouble with my AD because I'd end up like sort of as we, you know, were setting up a set, I'd like rush off to talk to the actors. She's like, you know, we need you over here. This is like, your job is not to key key over at, you know, at the set chairs. Um, I, I was thrilled. It was an incredible experience. Yeah, and I, can't, I cannot wait to do it again. And my final question for you is, if you can use one word to capture this episode of The Good Fight, what would it be? Oh, um, gosh. One, only one, only one, only one, only one. Only one, one word. <laughs> um, okay, give me two seconds to think about it. Mm -mm -mm. This is like, um, I hear the Jeopardy music going in my head. Oh, God, I don't want to be like cliche and say hope because uh, I don't think that's what it is. But, um, oh gosh. Ah! It's as if I we completely, I'm just going to say hope just so that we can get out of this, but I'll keep thinking about this and I may send you an email later. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Nikki, and I hope you enjoyed the rest of your day. You too. Thanks. It was a pleasure to meet you.